Romans chapter 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. Well, that's a bad word today. No one's a servant to anybody. Paul says, I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. Called to be an apostle. Again, the qualification for the apostleship was Acts 1, 21, 22. John's baptism. They were with Jesus on his earthly ministry and seen the risen Christ. Tells you something about Paul. Separated. Again, that is a Bible doctor. Paul left those Jews that did not want to serve God. Paul left the Pharisees unto the gospel of God. The good news of God. Which he has promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scripture. So that gospel is in the prophets. And it's been promised by God in the Scripture. And all through the book of Acts, you've seen Paul with the Old Testament scriptures and the prophets and Moses, the law, showing him Jesus Christ. Now it said here that in AD 60, about then, that this letter was written to the Romans when Paul was in Corinth. We've already read that in Acts. So he's not in Rome, he's writing to the Rome. We'll see in a few moments what he says. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. What's it all about? It's about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So it's all about. Which was made of the seed of David, Jewish, the kingly line, Matthew 1. According to the flesh, Luke 3, Jeremiah 22, 28. Concerning his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's the one the only and declared to be the son of God the son Jesus Christ our Lord with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead that's the power no one's come out of the grave you say Lazarus came out of the grave yeah but years later he went back Jesus Christ went to the grave, was buried, and never to return again after his resurrection, and will never return again. By whom, Jesus, and his resurrection, we have received grace and apostleship. Well, that's not all of us. That's Paul signing his name in the apostles. For obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Listen, we're to go out to everybody and preach as the apostles among whom are ye also called of Jesus Christ how by the like faith of believing on the Lord Jesus Christ the Romans the Gentiles to all that be in Rome beloved of God saved there's no love of God when you reject Jesus Christ that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that's past tense he that has the Son has eternal life, but he that has not the Son shall have the wrath of God, John the Baptist says. So he's definitely right into Christians. Called to be saints. Well, that's no one lost. The only way you're a saint is if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved this day and age. Those that had obeyed the law in their day and age. Those are called to be saints. They're alive. They're people living. You could be a dead saint, but you've you got to be a live saint before you be a dead saint. Grace to you and peace from God our Father. Imagine God saying, uh, Paul saying, to be the saints, grace unto you, peace from God our Father. If he's talking to a bunch of people in the graveyard. Really? They're asleep. They're absent from the body present with the Lord. They've already got the peace. From God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. That's one and all. That's not two, two different beings. That's they're together. Peanut butter and jelly. They're together. Yeah, there's peanut butter and there's jelly. But when you put them together, they make a sandwich. They're one. First, all right, first thing in this letter. I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all. Hmm. He's thanking them for the Romans. That your faith is spoken throughout the whole world. Luke 2 1. 
their faith has spread. People are saying, you, you, you know those those heathen the Romans are doing in the name of Jesus Christ? You know what they've turned from? And to turn from a Roman to Jesus Christ with their orgies, their multiple gods. Listen, Rome was a wicked empire. Everything they'd done, those Colosseums, those Olympics, were all wicked. And to say that there are a bunch of people who believed on Jesus Christ and they are set themselves apart. They have separated from what the, the government and the people are doing. That's outstanding. In other words, they're, leaving, they're living clean lives and doing right. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit. See, we have a spirit. Body, soul, and spirit. And with my spirit, I can serve God or I can serve the flesh. In the gospel of his son, that without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayer. He's always praying. Paul is always praying. I don't even add up to that sum of Paul praying for every one of them. I come short. I don't pray for everybody. I should. Making requests. I don't think Paul's a liar. Making requests. If by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. Oh boy. Wait a minute. He wanted to go to Rome. Keep reading. For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. To the end ye may be established. I want to go to Rome. I want to see you. Really? What did we just read in the last few chapters of the book of Acts? Paul, I want you to go to Rome. Oh, i got to go to Jerusalem. No, you don't got to go to Jerusalem. you got to go to Rome. No, nope, I've got to be there at that feast day. I'm going to be there. Paul, you go in there. You're going to go. In there. You're going to end up in handcuffs. Oh, I'll die for God. And he's right. They say he's right in this in Corinth. When he's in Corinth, he has the idea. I want to go see you guys. Years before he gets in the mess of going to Jerusalem. That, I, that is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith. That's the spiritual gift mentioned in verse 11, the mutual faith. Now, when you think of spiritual gift, tongues and, and healing, no. Faith is a gift of God. Both of you and me, the Romans, you and me, we can come together in Christ. Now, I would not have you ignorant. I don't want you stupid. Brethren, save people, save Romans, save Jews, save, save Gentiles, anybody else is there that's saved, that oftentimes I purpose to come on to you, but was let hitherto. I want to come to you, but there are things that have happened in my life I couldn't, and then there's going to be later on a big thing in my life that I separated myself from God. I should have been with you, but my own personal willpower, my own personal way prevented me over three years from coming to you. That I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. Now, they are living right. They're activity their lives their separation has been out through the world what the romans are doing for jesus christ and disciples so when paul is involved going to jerusalem he's arrested he's got all these court cases he's got all these time and three years and the shipwreck and all that you realize how much fruit he lost by being in jerusalem festus felix the other guys that did not get saved and yet there's fruit of being counted in Rome and Paul cannot claim to any of that fruit because he's fooling around in Jerusalem where he should not be he was warned by the Holy Spirit he was warned by the by the Christians he was warned by uh, Adabus Agabus Adabus the, the bus there and over three years he's lost and there's fruit to be in Rome 
That's why God wanted them there. They needed Paul more than the Jews who were going to lock him up and try to kill him and lie about him and put him in prison. When we got to the last chapter of Acts, man, he has his own house now, and they're coming to him. Paul, yeah, I'd like to speak to you about the Bible. Come on in. Hi, Jerusalem. Chain them up. Put them in jail. Kill them. God knew the heart attitude. I'm a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as I is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. No, he's going to preach the gospel. Let me say it again. He's not going to come up with skits. He's not going to come up with programs. He's not going to come. He's going to preach the gospel. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. What must I do to be saved? Save in prayer? No. What must I do to be saved? Baptized? No. What must I do to be saved? Believe in a, join a church? No. What must I do to be saved? It's the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins. According to the scripture, he was buried and he rose again. According to the scriptures, that is the salvation set by God. To believe with our heart and to believe with your mouth. To everyone that believeth in the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Notice how he's still in Corinth. He's still, that Jew first, that Jew first, that Jew first. And it's not he's putting the Jews and the icky Gentiles. No, he just has a love for his brethren. He has such a love, it is going to cause him to sin against God. And there are many people out there, Christians today, they just love America. They just, oh, America. And they're sinning against God because God's saying, forget about America. What about Americans? Stop trying to save America and preach to them the gospel that the Americans can, may get saved. For thereby is... The righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith Turn it. see my notes here um, Habakkuk I think 2 4 Galatians 3 11 and Hebrews 10 38 that just shall live by faith now, that's an interesting study those three places four places the just shall live by faith. Faith in what? What well, he just told you, the gospel. How am I saved? What is my justification? Jesus Christ. What is the justification of Jesus Christ? That he died for me. Well, well see, you know, I was on a battlefield over here, and a guy, wounded guy, a soldier came over and laid on a, on a landmine for me, and I was, so I'm going to heaven? Did they bury that man? Yes, they buried him. Did he resurrect and seated at the right hand of the Father? Well, no. Then the salvation is not just somebody laying their life down for you. The salvation is also that the risen Savior that sits at Jesus Christ, uh, sits at God's right hand. That's the salvation. For the wrath of God. Uh oh. You mean that loving God? The God of love? The wrath of God. John the Baptist says, He that has the Son has eternal life. He that has not the Son shall see the wrath of God. The wrath of God is not proper preaching today. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and all unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. They had the truth, but they became perverted. All men are born in their heart to believe that there is a God. Now, it is your free will to say, God, what must I do to be saved? Like that Philippian jailer. What must I do to be saved? What does God expect from me?
Because. This is why the wrath of God. Because that which may be known of God is manifested in them. For God has showed it unto them. God has shown men the truth. A little child will look up at those stars and say, Somebody made that. That is not a product of nothing. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. There are things you can't see that you can see. Being understood by the things that are made. Everything they say is made of atoms. I can look at my Bible right now and this Bible is made of atoms. I can't see the atoms, but the result of all the atoms being together, I can see a Bible and read from it. I'm going to sneeze, I think. Shoot, excuse me. By the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. Do you realize the very existence of things you can see and things you can't see are going to judge against you if you are ungodly, if you are unrighteous? A man going to stand before the, before the great white throne judgment and God has said, how did all this come? How did you come to be? Now we're going to read about evolution in a minute, but let's step for a minute. Where do babies come from? I know mother and father come together, yeah, but in reality, in the scope of evolution, where do babies come from? Explain it. You get a man that's born, he may not be able to produce children. Or he may be able to produce children. But no man has ever been produced can't produce children because he hasn't been produced. What is time? Where does time come from and where does time go? When we first started Romans chapter 1 tonight, where is that in time? Where did it go? And as we venture forth into verse 11, that time is now going to come. Where did that time come from? I can't see time both past and present. It's not here or it's not here yet. And yet God says by revelation of time, by revelation of what human beings are. Do you realize Evolution teaches everything is getting better and better. But as far as babies from the first man and woman, shouldn't that have run out by now? Shouldn't there be no more babies because whatever that is, it ran out? And yet there are more babies produced than there were in the beginning. And how do you know, okay, let's get into the science. How do you know what man says about a baby is true? Oh yeah, you got your you you got your microscope, you got your stuff and all that. You've never seen it. But with your instruments you can see it. And when God says, Okay, you can see conception, and you're still gonna say that happened from nothing. Your own reasoning is gonna tell you you're a liar. And if you were to sit a scientist down and a politician and break out the truth, the truth would be honestly to say, I just don't want to believe God. Because they're already saying evolution is a lie today. But they've got to find something else. They can't say they're a liar and they can't say it's God. Explain how your ears work. Explain how your nose smells. Explain how do you talk. And God will say one day, all that stuff I gave to you is the witness that it's God who did it. Today is Thanksgiving Day. Have you ever been?
been in your car and thank God that your right foot can do what it's supposed to do? And how did you know what your right foot's supposed to do? Can you thank God to say, my arms are able to turn that steering wheel? And when that guy cut me off, I am allowed to have all the things I need to do to move the car out of harm's way. To get did you thank God for that? And you can't explain it. Yet it happens. You take your breath for granted. And yet the Bible, Genesis chapter 2, Two says that breath came from God. Do you think God? You ever see your breath? You don't see it. That's an invisible thing, but yet that's your life. And when God takes your breath, you ain't got no more life. You're supposed to, God, when you breathe, God. When you exhale, God. 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 That's what you're supposed to do. Your breath is supposed to tell you you got God. Because that. Now we're going to go man's reason. Because that, when they knew God, everybody knows God. The, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Native American knew there was a great white father. And it was up to him to say, hey, great white father, what is it that you want from me? Great White Father, you drop that deer down. That deer can feed my family. I thank you, Great White Father. And that guy from his heart, that Native American, is truly seeking out to that God. Then God's obligated to meet down to that Native American before there's no Bible, before no one even knew that they were Native American. And God just reached down to him and say, a revelation. And that Native American, before the Bible has come to Native America, if he believes in God and the revelation that God has given him and, the, and the, the facts that God has given him to what God has given him, and those get confused, and if he stands in the great white throne judgment, not ever knowing about Jesus Christ, because no missionaries have come over here, and yet he has believed God to his fullest that God has given a revelation, his name may be in that book of life, and he may be pulled out of the great white throne judgment and be saved, just like you and me. Everyone, every dispensation has the knowledge there's a God. Now, what do you do with that? You can believe God, and God give you a revelation of what you're supposed to do, or they glorify him not as God. Now we're going to go on. The, we're going to go in the realm of sin and rebellion. Neither were thankful, except for one day of the year. And what thankful you got right now? The the pigskin was taught, and we're getting ready to get our credit cards all nuzzled into our wallets and looking for a Black Friday deals. The one day that this country gives to God, you really think they gave it to God? We went down to the beach here in Daytona Beach, and there were people in the water. There were people that had uh, the umbrellas. They were laying on the beach. You think they were thinking about God? But became vain in their imaginations. Hollywood, radio, messes with your imagination. And their foolish heart. See? There's that heart was darkened and when your heart has been been worked by sin been worked by ungodliness worked by unrighteousness it's been tampered by satan it becomes dark and dead and the only way to revive that heart is to believe with your heart in the lord jesus christ to get life and get clean and get light that's why your heart needs to be saved that's why your heart condition because right now without god it's darkened professing professors themselves to be wise look at all the degrees i got on my wall look at all the science look at everything and god says became fools God says anybody that teaches against God in his word is a fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And God says you're a fool. 
God says a man that professes evolution, a man that teaches no God, a government leader says it's it's no God. You're just as bad as an atheist, you're a fool. And change the glory of an uncorruptible God, Jesus Christ, God, uncorruptible, sinless, into an image, image, that's the broken of the second commandment, image, made like unto corruptible man. You mean that Jesus that stood nailed to the cross? That's not Jesus. You mean the mother holding the baby with her foot on a snake? It's an image. Was it somebody said the other day, uh, the picture of Jesus' dead body in his mother's arm? Well, wait a minute, that's not real. That's an image. An image. A poster on a child who is a Christian family wall of their bedroom. An image. A sports card that has a picture. An image. Money that has an image made like to corruptible man. The dead presidents on your money. And birds. The eagle of nations. Four-footed beasts. The Indians over there in Asia that, you know, the cow could be grandma. And creepy things. Those creepy things. Don't kill them because it could be grandpa. We've got education and religion. Education and religion will turn your heart into darkness against God. Wherefore, because of 21, because of 22, because of 23, God also gave them up. Religion and education, God said, I'll give you up. To uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. To dishonor their bodies between themselves. Now God said, listen, I give you up. I don't love you. But I love the world enough. I'm going to send somebody to your door. How you doing? I'd like to tell you about Jesus Christ. I'm going to send somebody who's going to yell at you on the street corner and tell you about what the Bible said. I'm going to have someone to invite you to their church so you can hear about the gospel. That's the love of God, but God don't love them. God loves the sinner and, and hates the sin, defiles Paul's chapter 1 of Romans. As far as the sinner, God says, I give you up. But the love of God is, I will send a gospel track. I will send the Bible. I will send the word to you. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. Modern Bible revisions. Modern Bibles. What more can you put that that first part of that verse? Who changed the truth of God into what? Adding and subtracting. And worship the worship and serve the creature more than the creator. You realize your King James Bible has no copyright. You can quote the King James Bible all you want and no one can take you to court. And yet, if I use an ASV, NIV, Living Bible, if I use any one of those modern Bibles by all practically of a law of Christian love, they can take me to court and sue me if I quote from their Bible. And their name is held to their Bible. Have you read your, your hymnal? Copyrighted by a name. No one else can use it. In, in all actuality, you know, you're not even supposed to be singing that law by the copyright song. That prevents you, that copyright. You cannot use it. And yet God's word, the word of a king, is published. And with that, the creator who's blessed forever. Amen. You know what God says about you and your name and your title? I'm the creator. I'm blessed. You're not. And you will have to hold charge to change in my word, Eve. That was the first sin that man ever created. 
I forget if she added first or she subtracted first, but it was one or the other in Genesis 3. She changed the truth of God into a lie. Genesis chapter 3. Go back and read it. Eve was your first Bible corrector. And look at the damnation she brought. Women, do you enjoy giving birth to a baby? Does it feel so great without the drugs? Well, thank Eve for changing the Bible. Do you like watching someone die? Thank you, Eve, for changing the Bible because all that is brought because she changed the Bible. She changed the truth into a lie. And men are praised for changing the Bibles today. They will properly sign it. Go, go pick up any modern Bible. Look how many names appear before that. I think it's the title page. Is that what it's called? Look at all the DDs, doctors, PHS, PH. Look at all the titles that go with it. They think they're smart. They profess themselves to be wise. And yet God says, you're a fool. For this cause. Another paragraph. For this cause. Because you have changed me and my word. Now pay attention, America. Because we do have American Standard Bible. And IV, NIV is prevent, prevailing everywhere. For this cause, verse 24 and 25, God gave them up. Wait a minute, you see, verse 24, God also gave them up. 26, God gave them up. How can you say that God loves the sinner? If a man tells his son, get out of here, I'm done with you, I just get out of my house, I'm done. Would you say, oh, he just loves his son. And yet the father says, because of your sins, and that's it, I don't want to have anything to do with you. But for God so loved the world, I will get my word to you. That's it. Anything else is going to be based upon what you do with the word. And likewise, uh, no, for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, worthlessness. That's America today. They care for the wrong thing. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Women sleeping and having intercourse with other women. That is not natural. But your peanut butter is natural. These vegetables over here in the produce section, they're organic, but the two women holding hands, lopping lips together are not natural. You cannot put a 100% natural sticker on both their foreheads, but you can put it on the pineapple they're buying if it's organic. An unnatural thing touching a natural thing. That's vile afflictions. Worthlessness. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of woman. I don't need to explain that. Every young boy knows about that natural use of woman. Burned in the lust one to another. Burn. Oh, I'm just on fire, love. Oh, the passion of flames. Ready? Men with men. Ill, unnatural, sickening, gross. God gave them up. Don't you march in a prayer and say God loves us too. 26 says no, God gave you up. You know why you're marching in that prayer? You know why you're a sodomite? Because God gave you up. And yes, you do have a Bible for your sin. You have a Bible for your religion. And God said fine, okay? You control your own priest with boys. Go ahead. See you do it. And while you're doing that, you're fulfilling scripture. How's that one? When you got a perverted Bible and you got sodomites in your church, hallelujah, the Bible's true. 
this denomination now is going to elect sodomite priests and then they're going to have them vote them in the congregation and welcome them and they have another bible praise god the bible's true it said you do that thank you for the bible being true men working that which is unseen you know what god says about it it's unseemly and reason in themselves that recompense, a reward, a promise that a, a punishment for evil, recompense of the error which was me. God says, I'll give you a reward. I'll take care of you. I'll give you punishment. How's that? Baby's getting eight. Look at all the things that's happening. We have rejected the Bible. We will not have the Bible in the court system. We will not have the Bibles in the school. So why are we having a bunch of people out shooting each other? Thou shalt not kill is not being taught. I grew up with water guns. I grew up with BB guns, but I knew the gun that was in my house. That's not for me to touch. That kills. A BB gun can hurt. It could kill. I mean, there's a little bit of leniency, but that gun that's over there is not for me to touch. If I touch it, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to suffer the responsibility of touching that gun. I was growing up with that. That's not growing up today. You ever see your video games? How can a parent... Oh, son, you're not supposed to kill people. Hey, look at this. We got you the Armies of Fortunes game. Hey, we got killing mutant alien games. Hey, we got steal a car with steal a car and run people over on the highway game. And you expect the judge to stand on his seat and tell that person he's guilty and he's been finger thumbing lives. All right, That's, this is one chapter. 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, education, schools, we don't want the, the Bible. So what's God say to that? God gave them over to a reprobate. That means abandoned mind. Wait a minute. School said we can't have the Bible. God says I'll give you to an abandoned mind. So how can they teach in school? How can a child learn when God says your mind has been abandoned? You know what? You, you got an open head so Satan could fill it with trash. What are they teaching in schools today? They're not teaching right. Man, my teachers and my mother forced me to learn spelling. At least most effort was put into that most effort by my mother and by my teachers forced me to learn proper mathematics you have removed the Bible and look at the junk that's going into the minds today and you got Romans chapter 1 verse 28 in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind because you don't want it in the schools. And to do those things which are not convenient. Things that are right. Kids coming out of school today are doing things they're not supposed to be doing, but yet in their eyes, it's okay, it's right. Schools are teaching kids how to do yoga and how to do mind control and teach other religions but God. And yet that's correct. All right. Look at all the times God gave them up. Romans chapter 1, for anybody, listen, anybody you see on your Facebook, say, God hates the sin and loves the, and loves the sinner. Just quote Romans chapter 1, 24 to 28 in that thing. And watch how quick they'll drop you as a friend. Do it. Being filled with all unrighteousness. Filled to the top. Full. 
Anything that's not right, they're filled with. Fornication. You've got teachers that are having sexual intercourse with their students. It's taught on Hollywood screens. Wickedness. Covetousness. That's advertising. All advertising is covetousness. Get what you don't have and get it now. Your way, any way, the longest way you want it. Maliciousness. Full of envy. That's what the priests and the Jews were turning Jesus and Paul over to. They got filled with envy. Uh, Proverbs says anger is heavy. Wrath is, is, is weighter than sand. But who could stand before envy? Well, your group of people get more than our group of people. <gasps> You've only seen the tip of the iceberg what's going to happen in this country when they get full of envy. Murder! Ooh, 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 murder! What is your murder rate today? Compared to when you had the Bibles in the school, when sodomites came, uh, were, were stew in the closet doing their, their filth behind closed doors and all that. What was the murder rate then? You know, our nation's capital is the number one murder rate in this country. That says a lot for our government. Debate. Debate. They have college courses and college podiums where they debate, the debating class. And God says it's wrong. I know a man who's in the ministry. Well, he debated other men, the Bibles and stuff like that. But there it is. It's wrong. Deceit. Well, that's Satan's work. That's in the church. It's also, hey, you want this piece of meat? Yeah, it's, it's two pounds with the bone. Unless you unless you got a dog, whatever that bone ain't going to do you no good. Now, if you got a dog that likes a bone, boom, okay. Here's a can of green beans. It's a certain amount of ounces. How much of it is water? Deceit. There was there was a, there was a, a, a grinder play. Yeah, you're supposed to get 12, 12 inches. You're actually getting 11, 11 and a half inches. Uh oh, you lost an inch. That's deceit. Small clean courts are full with deceit. Malignity. That's extreme sin to the fullness. That would be your child molesters, your evil, wicked men that are in prison that just enjoy the crimes they do and will do it more. Whisperers? Would you ever think that whisperers would show up with this list? You hear what I hear? Did you see what I saw? Backbiters. Oh, that's a that's a Baptist church right there. Check the scars in my back. Talking about people behind their back. Husbands and wives talking about their spouses behind their back. Parents talking about their I mean children talking about their parents behind their back. Haters of God. You mean whispers are equal with haters of God? You wouldn't think that had to be said there, but there are people that hate God. I mean, I, I'm not saying they hate God because something malicious happened in their life, and they're. I'm not saying that kind of thing. You could work with somebody on that, but there is just a vile, wicked hated for anything to do with God that. 
the Jews and the we're doing that with Paul and Peter. We gotta do anything and Jesus. We gotta do anything to kill. Them. We want them dead. In the name of God, across. Despiteful, proud. I love to hear from a pulpit anybody or, or and somebody on a tape that, that's preaching. I'm just so proud of our Sunday school class. I am just so proud of this Christian. I'm just so proud of this work. And God listens that with haters of God. There is no room for pride and proudness with God. It's a sin. Union pride, proud to be American. Sin. Boasters. Wow. We got 45 people saved this weekend. We went out in all this area. Look what we did. Look how great we are. Look, we wouldn't be anything. This place wouldn't be anything if it wasn't for us. That's pride too. You won't believe how many women I was with this weekend. Proud boasters and proud. Maliciousness, malignity, fornication. You know like some of these sins, if you do one, you do two or three or four. I have to do my Ten Commandments or get my outline for that one and show you when you do when you break one commandment you break two or three or four of them at once it's amazing inventors of evil things nuclear bombs guns torture devices somebody had to think of that day I mean listen the the, the rack it wasn't like somebody went down their basement one day and turned up. Oh, what's that thing? That thing's a torture somebody? Oh, okay, let me bring it out. No, somebody had to think of that. Somebody had to design the guillotine. Who would be so sick to say, I'm going to remove babies from inside of a woman's belly? Who would be so sick? But remember, those people that invent evil things are just as bad as, as ones that debate. The whispers are just as bad as those that invent these wicked things. And the backbiters. And the proud. The proud and boasters are just as bad as those that come up with those wicked devices. Disobedient to parents. How's that one? You know what the Old Testament law said? If you had a child that disobeyed you, you brought them to the elders and you stoned them. And I don't mean marijuana. You know what God says about our children, how we're supposed to raise them in, in the properness that we're supposed to raise them? Back in, in the law it tells us, which we're not supposed to do today, but God so much in the law said, that child does not do right, you stone them. Now let's see what God says about it in the New Testament church by the Pauline Apostle. A child that's disobedient to his parents is just as bad as fornication, wickedness, murder, debate, deceit. And look at the nation of kids today. And you realize what they if they're disobedient to parents, they will murder, they will deceive you, they will be whispers, they'll riot, they'll hate God, they'll do everything that's on this list. Because they have no authority for mom, they ain't gonna have no authority for the cops. And they got no authority for the cops, forget the judge, and they don't have authority over the judge, they sure not gonna have no authority over God. They're not even gonna listen to a Bible. And when these people riot, don't even try to take a Bible off the street to stay in your house and protect your family. Because listen, if they're doing that kind of thing, they're not going to listen to God. And I'm all for preaching. You know, when, when those, those silversmiths in Ephesus started crying out, dying, you know how Paul and them stopped preaching and let, let the town handle it? They didn't preach during that. Because they wouldn't listen because they're all starring to Diana. Without understanding. Ooh. Understanding the Bible is your relationship to God. They have no knowledge of to God and wisdom of God. Covenant breakers. You make a peace treaty. You sign your name to a document and then you break it. 
without natural affliction. We already talked about that with men and women. That's also here. A mother leaves her unborn, or leaves her newborn child in a sack of garbage. Someone goes in a restroom in a public place and finds a baby's been killed or thrown in the garbage or trying to be flushed in the garbage can. That sounds gross, but that is today's news. And that's found in Romans chapter 1. Why is all this happening? Because you change the Bible, you, you change the truth of God into a lie. Now, suffer the consequences. Be not deceived, God is not marked. Whatsoever man soweth, that ye shall also reap. Without natural fish, implacable, that's not being a please. Marijuana. Then you move the next drug. Then you move to the next highest drug. And then you're robbing and killing people for the drugs. And then you're going to the big drugs. Marijuana, I mean, beer. Then you go to the hard drinks. You go to the hardest drink. And then your whole life is just, you're just a big slobbering drunk. Because you didn't get enough from the enough of your sin. It got worse and worse. You can also say that about sex. Some people are addicted to it, got diseases by it, and are threatened by it because they just didn't get enough anymore. It's it's, it's no more that little thing. I gotta get more. And covetousness runs in that realm. Unmerciful. Chopping people's heads off just because you won't believe in their religion. Torturing during the dark ages because you wanted a Bible. Unmerciful. Who knowing the judgment of God. They know God's going to judge them. They know there's a hell. How's that? Verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. John 3, the last verse says, he that has the Son has, has life. He that has not the Son shall see the wrath of God abide upon. They know. There are people that you knocked on their door. There are people you preach on the street to them. There are people that they read the gospel tract that you gave them. And they know that God said. I don't care. I enjoy it. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I don't care what that track says. I don't care what that preacher said. I don't care what those visitors said. I am going to sin, and I'm going to enjoy the sin we're going to read. I don't care what God has to do with it. He's got to throw me in hell. Throw me in hell. Listen, that's that's the sign of sin. Not every you can't read Romans chapter one and say everyone's going to heaven. Really, I don't want this crowd with me in heaven. I don't want their company. This company goes off in a lake of fire. Who know the judgment of God that they which commit such things. We just read the whole entire list. Which commit such things are worthy of death. Paul, you're... You, you're quoting the old, the old Testament here in the church age. You're saying these people should die for these sins? <sighs> Paul, how mean are you? I mean, we're supposed to put sodomites to prison and then kill them? Who know the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Paul says in Romans 13 that the government has that power of the sword. You know, our constitution in this country gives you legal right to sin and enjoy it. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do it. You're going to deal with some people when you do what God told you to do and go in all the world and preach to God. You're going to deal with some people. You're going to sit right there. They're just going to smile and say, hey, you know what? I don't care. I just don't care. And you know what? They're being perfectly honest. They're going to take a gospel track. They're going to smile and say, yep, yep. And they're going to go on their way and they're going to do exactly what they're going to do without even thinking about changing. That's what the Bible says. 
That's the other side of God. Love God hates the sin and loves the sin. That's the other side. It's not true. That's not true. They will suffer the wrath of God unless they get their heart right. But right now, in this condition, their heart has been darkened. The only way they can get right is if they take that heart and put the light to it and get saved. That's why salvation is not a prayer. That's why salvation ain't baptism. Your baptism can't get to your heart. That's why salvation can't be a church membership that has nothing to do with your heart. That's why a shrink can't handle these people. The problem is not your brain. You know, there's imagination here. Imagination was one thing of the entire list. It's your heart. And that's what God thinks of sin. And that's what God thinks of sinners. And yet he tells us in his love and his long suffering, go in all the world and tell them. But many are not going to, they're going to be Romans chapter 1. But you're to tell them. Your job is to tell them. Now their job is what they do with their heart between them and God. 